just um, first really proud of our kids and the way they fall prepared. Um, but obviously it stinks to, uh, to to not get the win tonight. And we just we didn't play good enough at, uh, in the critical moments. Uh, had a turnover. Probably three minutes to go or four minutes to go, and and uh, then obviously didn't execute uh, fourth and whatever it was there. You know, really came down to those few plays in, in a game like this. But uh, man, it's, it's a lot of hurt in that locker room and it stinks. Um, our kids gave themselves a chance to win the Iron Bowl tonight, and, and uh, it's going to stick with us for a while. Proud of the way our kids fought and prepared. That's the way an Auburn Tiger should do it every single week. Obviously, it's a little easier when you're uh, playing in this magnificent, awesome rivalry, but uh, it makes the hurt that much more uh, when you don't get it done. And um, but I'm proud of the way that they fought and bounced back, and I thought they executed our plan pretty well um, and gave us gave us a chance to win the game. Chase. You can talk about that the last play, that fourth and 31 defensive bit, you know, the decision maybe to not pressure him uh, yeah. and, and sit back. I mean, even second guess it, I, you just got to play with vision. We got nine guys back there and just play with vision and make a play on the ball and knock it down. And, you know, he felt like he was shoved off, but I, I, don't, I, I couldn't tell. But, you know, I mean, you can pressure them, and then you got one on ones, and they throw it up. You can do that if you want, or you can play. I, I like the call. I just think we got to just sit back there with vision and, and knock the ball down. Justin, you the uh, the muff punt. Um, Craig Farron was was that coy back there, or Keontae? That was uh, Keontae. It was Keontae. It just the the how big that play was in in, in this game. Keontae is uh, one of our leaders. He's uh, an incredible teammate, and no one will hurt more than him. But obviously, it was, uh, I mean, that was vital. We got a four point lead, and we have the ball there with under four minutes left in the game, and a couple first downs, and this thing's getting getting wound down. Mike. Uh, Coach, uh, so many times this year, we've heard you say uh, that these games come down to vital decisions here or there. Uh, anything that stands out in your mind? Was there a reason that uh, Coy was back on that punt instead of Keontae? Well, was it Coy? I thought it was Keontae. I think I'll just Coy. All right. Coy. Um, I'll have to ask Tanner. Yeah, it would have to be Keontae. Must have taken himself out. Okay, Coach, over here. Um, I know you said there's a lot of hurt in that locker room right now. What do you even say to the locker room after a loss like that? I don't think any coach has the words. You tell them you love them that they will learn from and get through it, but it's going to hurt. And there's there's no way around it, and you're going to have to walk through the hurt. Hey, Coach. Uh, actually, here hearing a story on Keldrick Falk from the 15 incoming freshman. Can you talk a little bit about the incoming freshman class and how they're already uh, proving positive gains already? Yeah, we, uh, you know, Keldrick's a very important, you know, part of our freshman class for sure. And, Several of them have contributed to us uh, this year, and we look forward to them being a foundation for the future. Right. You, what kind of change between the first and second half with uh, Peyton Thorn? He was two, two for ten in the first half, and then he was kind of, you know, better in the second. Yeah, I don't. We didn't change anything. It was all still in the game plan that we had. And I didn't think he threw real, real accurate balls a couple times in the first half, and um, there was a couple that were dropped too. That you know. We're all, all, th all of those are so magnified in this game, and then you know. But he did play a really good second half, I thought. You, Alabama front, big physical guys. You guys ran the football and had a great running day. Just, just, just talk about what you saw from the running game today, and Peyton doing that too. Well, we had a good plan, and um, 
they do have a really good front. And um, but our, our backs and tight ends and O line took it personal. We knew we had to run the football to win this game, and uh, thought we ran it well enough to win it. Um, just uh, came up short. Talk about Javarius Johnson's development in the second half. It seemed like every pass was going his direction. He kept on making plays. Talk about his effort and how that contributed to the second half play. Yeah, he was really vital to the plan. And um, once he once he decided this year that he was going to adhere to the standards that we want of how we want to go about our work, uh, he's gotten better and better, and that's uh, it's good to see for him. You, I know you're very disappointed with the result, but the atmosphere the recruits you had here, just the way you all played, are, are you pleased at least the, the type of uh, performance you put on from these people? Well, we have the best fans in the country, and that atmosphere tonight is, you know, off the charts, best I've ever been a part of, and just wish we were out there celebrating right now together. But um, we do have a lot of good recruits here, and hopefully they see, even in year one, we're not, you know, we can we can close the gap pretty fast on the upper echelon of this conference. Coach, obviously this loss seems like the one did against Georgia, but in your first year as head coach, do you feel accomplished by any means that what you've been able to do with this team having two very close games against top teams? Well, if you, if you isolate it to those two games, you know, you, you feel like you've done some good things, but it's hard when you you know, we get judged in this game on wins and losses. And um, we all know that when we get signed up for it. And when you have a chance to to win one like we did tonight against a, you know, team that's playing for our conference championship next week and our rival, it's hard to feel anything but hurt and disappointment. And, you know, you wish, like I said earlier, you were out there with the Auburn faithful and, and celebrating another uh, Iron Bowl win at, at Jordan-Hare. We'll finish up over here on the side. This first year, it's not exactly what you expected, but for the next years, what does vision look like for Auburn University? Well, we're going to we're going to be one of the elite programs in the country, and um, I really didn't have a vision for this year other than to try to get us to a bowl game and improve us from week to week. And I can't say that. Uh, that every week I have felt like that, and that's why you know you're hard on yourself as a coach. And um, we got to look at ourselves as coaches every single week, every single day. And are we demanding a standard that's going to get us to that elite status? That combined, obviously, with, with recruiting classes that are comparable to the upper echelon. I mean, we can't recruit in the 30s and 40s and 50s and expect all of a sudden to walk out there and just be great coaches and. You've got to, it's a combination. You've got to coach to a certain standard and you've got to, you know, recruit somewhere close to level par to the way those guys and some others in this league are.